Good morning. Welcome to, the, welcome to worship this morning. There are several announcements in our bulletin to draw our attention to. Um, first, if you notice, we have our rainbow cart back out in the narthex again. Um, we are collecting snacks and treats, this time for Hartley Elementary School teachers. Um, conferences are coming up, and this time we will be bringing conference meals to the teachers at Riley and snacks to the teachers at Hartley. And um, yeah, it was, I got to deliver with Terry the cart to Riley, and like, we, we had very quick friends. Because, you know, a little bit of a pick-me-up, it goes a very long ways when you're having a rough day. So a little sunshine. So if you're able to, bring some snacks to fill our snack cart. Um, Lent is coming up. Mark your calendars for February 22nd. We'll have dinner at 5 o'clock and worship at 7. And our theme is from death to life. And we'll hear about God's life-giving presence, especially in the stories of, kind of the epic stories of the Old Testament. Um, we're going to start a new Bible study based on the mini-series television show, The Chosen. Um, it's now in its third season, so we're going to start with season one. Um, it is free on, well, that's not really, that's not true. You can get it for free on Amazon Prime, but of course you have to have the Amazon Prime membership, so, um, so not really free, but if you don't have Amazon Prime, it, I think it's also on Netflix, maybe, and it's also free just if you Google it online. Um, you can watch it on the computer. Um, the reason I tell you that is we're going, to have, we're, we're going to have Bible study and we're going to watch the show together at church. So you might not even need to know how to find this thing. But, um, but our time is kind of short um, because I would like to get it done, get, the, get through the study before Easter. Because after that we get kind of busy schedules. So we're going to start this coming week, and we're going to go all the way through the end of March. And we're going to have it at two different times, one at Wednesday at noon or at Tuesday from 5 to 6.30, which I know is not, not probably great for some schedules because 5 o'clock is supper time and barely off of work. Um, but bells start at 6.30, and Lauren does not like me late for bells. So, <laughs> so we have to be done by 6.30. So um, if you can't make it by 5, maybe consider watching the show ahead of time before you come and just joining us for the discussion and sneaking in the side, and it, that will work just great. Um, and bring food and have so that you can eat dinner. Um, you can either bring a sack lunch on Wednesday at noon or bring some um, sack lunch for supper at 5 o'clock, and we'll watch the series together and have some great discussions and... Um, yeah, it should be a good, it should be good. Um, let's see. We're going to have a clothing drive. We're inviting the congregation to bring in um, any clothing that they'd like to donate, new or gently used or, you know, in good shape clothing, but maybe stuff that you don't want in your closet anymore. Um, we're going to collect it through next week, then we're going to organize it. In February 19th through the 25th, we'll have the congregation come through and peruse and we'll kind of share, you know, what one person's, yeah, you know. And then February 25th through March 4th, we're going to open it up to the whole community and share free clothes that way and just invite others to come and peruse. And then after that, we're going to donate to the Open Door Mission. So somebody will find it helpful and it's a great way to clean out closets because sometimes that needs done. Um, also, next Sunday, we're having a Super Bowl party at our house. Our address is in the bulletin. We'd really love to have friends, the more the merrier. Um, if you want to watch the football game, Todd's got, Todd's got under control with that. And I'm, I'm the social director for everybody else who's mostly inter interested in the commercials, you know, in the middle. And then the kids are the social directors for anybody who wants to run around and play should be a lot of fun. Bring a potluck treat to share if you'd like to, and if you have a favorite beverage, bring that. I'll have um, two liters of pop around, but if you have a favorite thing you like to drink, bring that with you. Um, and also next week, we're going to have a YouthWorks mission trip meeting starting right after worship. Okay, those are my announcements. Others? In our prayers today, 
We lift up Harold Bartlett. Harold is in the hospital, but he's hoping to move to Lancaster Nursing and rehab uh, for rehab um, tomorrow. And we keep Jack Farber in our prayers. Jack has moved to Tabitha um, Care Center. And um, we keep Jack um, Farrell in our prayers. He's having surgery on Friday. Others in our prayers today? The Westerholt family, too. Evelyn Westerholt passed away this week, and so we keep Steve especially in our prayers as he grieves, and the rest of the family as well. Others? Let's begin our worship. We begin by rising and singing together. Lord God, with endless mercy, you receive the prayers of all who call upon you. By your Spirit, show us the things we ought to do, and give us the grace and power to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear the good news. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us, even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you through the power of the Holy Spirit that Christ may live through our hearts through faith forever. 
ごめん。First reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways. And if they were a nation that practiced practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God, they ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. In such, the fast that I choose, a day to humble oneself, is to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in a sackcloth and ashes. Will you call this fast a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bounds of injustice and to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and 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 not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light will Then your light shall rise in the darkness, and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually, and satisfy your needs in parched places, and make your bones strong. 
and you shall be like a water, a watered garden, like a spring of water whose water never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer, the restorer of the streets to live in. The word of the Lord.
The second reading this morning is from Paul's, St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did, not pro- I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my, speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit and of power so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature, we do speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish. But we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, What no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human except the human spirit that is within? So also no one comprehends what is truly God's except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. And we speak of these things in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual things to those who are spiritual. Those who are unspiritual do not receive the gift of God's Spirit, for they are, they are foolishness to them, and they are unable to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Those who are, sp- those who are spiritual discern all things, and they are themselves subject to no one else's scrutiny. For who has known the mind of the Lord at, so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. The word of the Lord. Please rise as you're able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 5. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes or Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, and I invite our young people up for the children's message today. We're going to stand today right over here, and we're going to watch something. Our church does something every Sunday that I don't think I've ever seen another church do. Now, I haven't been to tons and tons of churches, so I'm sure there's other churches out there that do this, but our church is kind of special because we, we do this every Sunday. Every Sunday, we light the candles on the altar, and when we do, we remember that Christ's light shines within us. And then every Sunday at the end of worship, we put the candles out because, because hang on a second, V one minute because if we don't the church might burn down right that'd be a bad deal but 
we remember that Christ's light that dwells in us at worship dwells with us always. And so, now go, we carry the light of Christ out of the sanctuary and we remember that we are called to carry Christ's light into the world through our everyday lives all the time. He's going to walk all the way out. All, yep, off she goes into the world to love and serve God. Right? Okay, you can come back again because we're still worshiping. Service is not done. Sorry for those who were like, uh-oh. And she put the light out. Whoops. <laughs> She's well-trained acolyte, yay. This is the thing. All of you come to worship, and we're filled up with Jesus. And then we're sent out, and we go to school, and we go to work, and we go and do our activities, and we do all the things that we do all week long. And Jesus says, let my love, let my light, let my forgiveness, let my kindness shine in you so that others will be touched by the same love that you're touched with. So we carry the love of Christ with us wherever we go. And that's why we do this thing at the end of worship every day, so that we remember that we're called to carry Christ's light into the world. I don't know about you, but sometimes, by the time we get to the end of church, I'm so excited to sing the last song that I hardly watch what V's doing. That's why we had her do it today, so that we could remember what we do and why we do it. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for your love. Thank you for the light that you've placed in each one of our hearts. Help us to share that light of your love in the world around us as we go through the whole week ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for coming up today. Help yourself to something in the bucket. One or two things. Okay, off you go. All right, off you go. Pick something quick. peace to you this day from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I think this portion of Jesus' sermon is amongst some of the most empowering things Jesus gave us. They're empowering words to live by. This scripture passage that we read today is part of the Sermon on the Mount. It's a rather large sermon of Jesus. We never read it all at one time. It's preached to the disciples of Jesus, not just the 12 disciples, but everybody who Jesus has touched with his love and his word and has healed and forgiven and who felt drawn to hear more of what Jesus has to say and then to live out Jesus's words in the world. A very large group of people have gathered around Jesus because many have been touched by his forgiveness and grace and healing. He's speaking to those who are desiring to follow him. And he preaches this rather long sermon. It's actually not so long. It's like two and a half to three chapters. We're at, two and a half, we're at the half chapter mark at this point. And it's about ironically, the same length as your pastor's sermon is, because I know, I know, how about that? Um, because 
It's about three pages in my Bible, and when I write a sermon, if I hit more than three pages single space, I know that you're going to want to be going for lunch by the time I'm done preaching that. So that's the, that's the mark. Stop at two pages. Three is too much. Anyways, Jesus. The sermon begins with the text that we read last Sunday, the Beatitudes. And it begins by Jesus reminding everybody around him who they are. Remember at the beginning of his sermon, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you, when they persecute you, when they utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Based on the sermon, who's the crowd gathered around Jesus? Who's the crowd that Jesus is preaching to? Are they people who have come because they have everything together and they're wanting to learn better leadership techniques? So they come to listen to Jesus' motivation speech, be the light. Is that the crowd? No. Not so much, I don't think. I don't think that the crowd gathered around Jesus are the ones that have it all together. If they were, why would Jesus start out by reminding us that when struggles are going on, when there are all kinds of struggles in your life and in the lives of those around you, you're blessed. Why does the sermon start there? Because. Because struggles are part of our experience as human beings. Christian or not, we all have them. We all struggle to keep things together a bit. We all struggle with our sin and our brokenness. We all struggle at times with being persecuted for something we are absolutely sure is right. We all struggle with keeping our faith. We all struggle with finding hope. This is part of humanity, part of who we are. And Jesus says, when we're struggling and when we're broken and when we're facing all of these times when we maybe don't appear to feel so blessed, you're blessed because, because the Lord is with you. Jesus is preaching to this group of people who are gathered, and they may not all feel so very blessed, but they are, because God is with them right there in the middle of it all. And God has promised not to ever give up on them. In fact, God has claimed them as beloved children of God. They are his disciples. Christ has claimed them as his own you are the children of the Lord. And as children of God, you're going to struggle. Because we do. But you will never struggle alone. Never. Because God loves you. And God sent his very son into the world to struggle along at your side, to forgive you, to give you grace, and to give you the promise that your struggles will never have the final word. Never. God will always bring a new beginning in some way. So you're blessed, and you are God's children. Children of God forever. And then the sermon moves on. Now that we know who we are, Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. You are light. You are a city of the hill. Be who you are. Be who you are. Be light in a dark place. Be flavor in a world that lacks taste. Be the city that people can't help but see. Be 
who you are as God's children. God does not give a prescriptive how-to. There is no how-to be light. Instead, we're simply called to be the children that God has made us to be. Christ dwells within us, so carry the light of Christ out to the world. Be who you are. That's the sermon. That's the sermon. And it's not overly rocket science stuff. You are forgiven. You are. Be children who forgive. You are loved. Be children who extend love. You have been fed with God's grace. Be the gracious children you've been made to be. You are filled with what you need. God provides all that you have, all that you are, all of your time and your talents and everything. Share all that you are. Not rocket science stuff. Be who you are as God's children. You don't have to have a great big action plan to do this. You simply go about your lives and live as the children that God has made you to be, sharing Christ's love wherever you go, wherever you're at. We were talking at text study about being light in the world and how it didn't take much. A little of God's light goes a very long way in a dark space. Pastor Rob was sharing about Kairos Prison Ministry, which is coming up again. They're going to have another Kairos retreat. And he was excited because this time, for the first time ever in Nebraska, they're going to allow us to bring in homemade cookies. And that's a big deal. It's a big deal because everything's institutional. But we can bring in cookies that have been made by somebody's hands. And when they're given, they're a gift that somebody has cared enough to make for somebody. Do you ever get homemade cookies? Even on the outside of prison, we like homemade cookies, right? They're a gift of the heart. Think about how much more they mean when that is always denied. So anyways, then Pastor Rob went on to talk about what they do with the cookies once they get there. They give them to the, pe to the, to the people who participate in this retreat as part of um, kind of the end of the day after they've had a long, hard discussion on forgiveness. Everybody gets one bag of cookies. A little bit of grace, a little bit of love, right? In a bag that's made of sugar. Okay? And then they get a second bag of cookies. And they're told to take the second bag and to be light. Take the second bag and bring the forgiveness that you've been given to somebody you're struggling to forgive or somebody who you need to ask forgiveness from. And everybody has somebody that that applies to. We all have somebody. They do in prison too. So bring the second bag of cookies, ask for forgiveness or extend forgiveness. Then Pastor Rob said, well, most people... The, most, the vast majority will take the first bag and eat them, then they'll eat the second bag too. Come on, we do the same thing, a lot of us. But there's always one or two who have been really touched and spoken to through this whole process. And they take it seriously. And they go and they think about who to give the bag of cookies to. And they take it. And you know, cookies are the invitation for a conversation, right? Same as a cup of coffee. You want to have a hard conversation and you don't know where to start? Invite somebody to have a cookie with you. Invite somebody to have a cup of coffee. Sit down, the conversation begins. That's the idea. So the forgiveness is offered or shared and extended. And then, then the next day happens and people come back. And the first question is, so how'd the cookie thing go? And a whole lot will sort of hem and haw because they ate their cookies. But one or two, one or two will say something like, it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. 
and then they'll share the story. Or, we're not there yet, but we're not as angry at each other as we were a while ago. Everybody's got a different story, but as the stories are shared, something happens. The whole group begins to realize that the thing that they did not want to even touch with a 10-foot pole, they'd rather eat their cookies instead, thank you very much, might not have been as hard as they thought it was going to be. And maybe they could do that too. And so now, now not only has a little bit of forgiveness begun, a seed's been planted too. Because suddenly the whole group begins to think that maybe they could do that. And then there's probably extra bags of cookies around, you suppose? Bet there are. I don't know. But it's a funny thing. A little tiny bit of forgiveness, a little tiny bit of light, a little tiny bit of grace, often does more than we anticipate it doing. Sometimes it helps our unique situation and plants a seed in an upcoming thing. It's a funny thing how it doesn't take much just a little bit. A little bit of Christ's love makes an immense change. Be who you are, Jesus says. Shine. Shine with God's love and see what will happen. But then the sermon continues. Because, you know, it goes on for a while, right? And the next thing is, the next thing is, the law matters and sin is real, and don't forget to keep God's law. Why does he follow this up with this next statement? I know. I know. Because we're broken people. And because although we carry Christ within us, we're sinful too. All of us are. And if the world sees us as a city on a hill, or light in a lampstand, or flavor. And we sin. We can rest assured that people see that too. And there's damage. Damage done in the world by our sin. Extra damage when people know that we're Christian and we do it. I will never forget I will never forget going to Walmart to order my wedding pictures. I had a photographer who took pictures and gave me the ability to print them out myself. She gave me a letter that said I could take them to Walmart. And so instead of spending a lot of money on every print, you know, I, I spent five cents on every print or whatever Walmart charged, right? So I was excited, excited, excited to be able to print out pictures for all of the people that I loved of our wedding and share them with the grandparents and all of that. And, of course, you know, I thought I'd give some of them away as Christmas presents to Grandma and Grandpa and such. And, of course, I'm, you know how organized I am. I'm always organized as your pastor, right? So I got married in July, and I had those pictures printed in August. No. No, it was November. And it was almost Christmas. And I thought, i got to get these Christmas presents organized. So I went to Walmart, and, you know, it was 15, 10 years. It was a long time ago now, and... I had a CD and I put it in the machine and it took forever. The computer took forever and I sat there for the better part of two hours selecting all of these pictures and choosing what I wanted and all of that. And when I was done, I asked the lady, I said, do you need this letter that says that I can do this because they all have a signature on them? Nope, nope, it's all good. They won't have any problem. Come back in a couple days. Pastors are always a little stressed at Christmas especially disorganized pastors. Not saying I was stressed or anything, but two days later when I went back to pick up my pictures, they weren't there. They weren't there. They weren't there because they were copyrighted and Walmart decided that they weren't going to print them. And then, not only were they not there, the entire order was missing. So they couldn't just take my letter and print it out for me. I had to sit and do two hours worth of ordering all over again. And I was mad. Really mad. Through a holy fit right there in the middle of Walmart. The kind of thing that is seven-year-old worthy. That's what I did. It was not good. 
and I'm not proud of it by any means. But I was throwing a fit, and I asked to speak to the manager, and it was Dennis and Walmart, and it was a very little place, and I knew all the people, right? And the manager shows up, and I know her. And she says, Pastor Carla, we're really sorry, but we can't do anything else. All we can do is try to fix the mistake, but yelling at us doesn't help. Yep. I, and I was still mad, but now I was embarrassed and needed confession because, because I didn't just throw a fit. I threw a fit, and they knew that I was Pastor Carla. So what will they remember? The pastor who throws a great big fit in the middle of Walmart? Or the pastor who's there to hug and pray? Which one? And we all know the answer. We all know the answer. Damage gets done when we sin. There is great responsibility in being a child of God. It is a huge, huge gift. But there is great responsibility because when we act badly as Christians, we damage things. We damage the light of Christ, don't we? In some way. So the sermon goes on to focus on the law. And Jesus says, keep it. I have not come to abolish the law. I have come to fulfill it. Every part of it has got to be kept. And if you break one of the least of the laws, you're least in the kingdom of heaven. Lovely. Good to know. Been there, done that. But here's the good news. Least, not kicked out. That is very good news. The truth is, we can do painful things and we can hurt, we can hurt deeply because of our actions. But Jesus does not give up on us. We're going to knock down a peg or two. That happens. People throw a fit in my house. They're not high on my list that particular day. But they're not kicked out. They're still loved. I throw a fit in my house. Not high on the, anybody's list that particular day. But not kicked out. Still loved. Same was true with us. We don't get kicked out because of our bad behavior. But it's serious. And it needs confession. And it needs forgiveness. And a chance to start over. And there's deep responsibility involved in this thing. A little bit of light can make great changes. But a little bit of sin does powerful things too. Jesus says both are important to pay attention to. Be who you are. That's God's word. Be light. Be flavor. Be the city that shines. Because the world needs Christ's love. And be responsible. Be responsible children of God as well. Because the world needs us. Sing with me. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. So shine, shine, shine where you are. You are the light of the world. You are a city on a hill. You are a city on a hill. So shine, shine, shine where you are. You are a city on a hill. Amen.
I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. say, here I am, God of grace. We pray for the church. Help us to be like salt of the earth and light shining in the world, that all may taste and see your goodness. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray for the earth. 
restore the ruins of creation, and provide water in parched places that all generations may know your glory. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray for all peoples. Help us to break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free, for this is the service you desire. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray for this community. Give bread to those who are hunger and shelter to those without houses, that may we, may, we may live as one human family. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray for loved ones. Strengthen weak hearts and bones and renew, renew those who are weary with the living water of your mercy. God of grace, hear our prayer. Holy One, our God, not even death can separate us from your love. We pray for those who are grieving. Let your light break forth like the dawn, and let your healing power spring forth, that we may know your saving work through Jesus Christ our Lord. Turn to your neighbors today and share that peace.
pray. Loving God, we give thanks for all that you have given us and praise you for your astounding goodness. Receive the dedication of our hearts, minds, and bodies for the ministry of your church. Bless our offering for the work that you're of your kingdom and give us wisdom for the right use of all that you have provided. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The meal is ready, and all are welcome at this table. Please come forward as the ushers give instruction today.
blessing. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you forever in his grace and love. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. We are sent out to love and serve God with our lives. We go with God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>